All right, here are solutions to the first perfect problem from Math 251. Uh, we are doing what secant and tangent line stuff here. So you're given a function f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 1. And you're asked to calculate the slope of the following secant line. So to calculate the slope of a secant line, maybe I'll call it m secant. What you need are two y coordinates and two x coordinates. So one way you could write it is like this. You could also say f of x2 instead of y2. Um, so I'm just going to use this formula three different times, essentially. Uh, x1 is always 2, so maybe I'll figure out y1 somewhere and just use that throughout the problem. Uh, to figure out y1, I take 2 and put it into here. In other words, I figure out what is f of 2. And I could probably even do that without a calculator. 2 squared is 4 minus 2 times 2 is also 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. Minus 1 leaves me with negative 1. Uh, so that'll be useful throughout the problem. I'll also need to know what... Uh, y2 is, and that's going to change for a, b, and c here. And since we're getting into decimals, I'm going to go ahead and pull out a calculator for this. So for y2, what goes up in the numerator here, I want 2.5 squared. And from that, I want to subtract. So I'm using this function, but putting 2.5 in, 2 times 2.5. And yeah, I know that's 5, but I'm going to write it out like this, and I'll show you why in just a second. Now I'm going to subtract 1. Um, and then from that entire thing, I want to subtract negative 1. So maybe I'll even write it as minus negative 1 to really emphasize what I'm doing. So this is the numerator of the secant here. y2 was all this stuff, and then I subtracted negative 1. So I'll close my parentheses to leave that all up in the numerator. And then I'm going to divide that by, and in the denominator, I want x2 minus x1. Well, x2 for this first part is 2.5. So I want 2.5 minus 2, which, yeah, you could probably do that in your head, but I'm going to leave it as 2.5 minus 2 because that way I can reuse it for future parts. So I hit enter. It thinks for a second, not really, and it spits out that the slope of the secant line is equal to 2.5. Cool. Um, and then for the second part here, we repeat what we just did. The only thing that changes is now x2 is 2.1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up that last entry. So I'll hit second and then enter and then just go through and edit it. So instead of 2.5 squared, I want 2.1 squared. Instead of 2.5, I want a 2.1. And in the denominator, instead of 2.5, I want a 2.1. I hit enter and it gives me 2.1. Uh, and then I'm going to do that one more time. Maybe I'll switch color again just because. Um, the same idea, except now x2 is 2.01. So I'm going to, again, pull up that last entry. I want to change all the 2.1s to 2.01s. So I'm going to insert second, and then delete allows me to insert a 0. Now it says 2.01. Second, Same idea here. Second, insert. Second, delete to get an insert. And I got 2.01. And if I hit enter, it gives me 2.01. Uh, okay, so now what I want to do is I want to look at these slopes and kind of think about what's going on. As my second point, x2, is getting closer and closer to my first point, x1, it started out kind of far away at 2.5. There's a distance of 0.5 there, but then it got closer at 2.1. It got really close to 2.01. These slopes, which coincidentally, I don't know if coincidentally is the right word, which for the case of this function are exactly equal to x2, uh, these slopes are getting closer and closer to the slope of the tangent line. So in part two here, it asks me to estimate the slope of the tangent line, and I would estimate m to be equal to 2. And the reason I would guess 2 is these numbers appear to be approaching 2 as the second point that defines a secant line gets closer and closer to the first point. Now it says sketch a graph of this thing, okay. Um, a couple ways you'd sketch a graph of it. You could rewrite this using function transformations and then sketch the graph of that. But probably a lot easier is to throw it into a calculator. So you hit y equals and you type it in here. I already did that to save a little bit of time. Then you hit graph. Um, and there's my graph. And maybe I'll zoom in a little bit just so it's a little easier to look at this thing and get the important features. I'm going to zoom in. Yeah, right about there. Let's see what that does. There you go. That's kind of a good picture. So let's throw this, I don't know, down here maybe, three. I'm supposed to graph this thing. And let's see, it looks like we have some important points here. Maybe we can figure out the important points by using the trace 
function. So I'll hit trace here, and then it looks like I could find my y-intercept. You could find that algebraically as well, but when x is really close to 0, y gets close to negative 1. So there's a dot right here. Then you can kind of look for your x-intercepts, which again, you can find algebraically, or you can kind of ballpark them with this thing. Uh, it looks like when y gets really close to 0, which is somewhere in here, uh, the x-coordinate gets close to negative 0.42. Uh, I think we can figure out that a little bit better if you use the calc feature. So I'm going to hit second and then trace to get into the calc menu. And look for some zeros here. And to find a zero, you have to give it a left bound and a right bound and then a guess. So I do all that. It thinks for a second and it tells me, yeah, it looks like you got a zero at about negative 0.41. Okay, so if this is one, negative 0.41, a little bit less than half, I'm going to put a dot. Ooh, I'm going to try to put a dot there. Uh, and then I can do that same thing to figure out, well, you know what? From here, I'm just going to kind of ballpark things and look at it. It looks like this vertex has a has coordinates of 1, negative 2. In fact, that is true. I know that from different analysis. So here's 1. Here's negative 2. Here's my vertex. Remember, we go through this point. And then we have this symmetry idea. So if it goes through that point, it must also go through this point. And then if it goes 0.4 to the left of here, it must go 0.4 to the right of here. What I'm saying is our graph is going to look, roughly speaking, it's pretty hard to draw on a calculator, or on a computer, I mean, something like this. We'll call that good enough. Here's my graph. Here's f of x. What I'm asked to do is sketch a tangent line, I believe. Let's see. Sketch a graph of f and its tangent line at x equals 2. Well, x equals 2 is right here, so I'm talking about this point. If I wanted to sketch sketch a tangent line at that point, I'd be drawing the line that just kind of barely touches right there. Be drawing this line. And then I stare at this line. I say, what's the slope of that line? Well, it's hard to tell in this picture, but it looks like the slope is approximately 2. Looks like this thing goes up about 2 every time it goes over 1. Sure, I'd buy that it's about 2. And that's a good thing because I estimated the slope to be 2 up here in part 2. So I think I'm done with part 3. Part 4 says, come up with an expression that represents the slope of the secant line when x1 equals 2 and x2 equals x. It's a little bit different. Really what you're doing is you're reusing this formula just like you had done before, just like we did up here. The only difference is x2 is not 2.5 or 2.1 or 2.01, it's x. So for part 4, I know that x1 equals 2, and I already figured out that y1 is equal to negative 1. x2, I'm told, is equal to x, so how do I figure out y2? Well, the same way I figured out y1. I take the x coordinate and I plug it into the function. If you take x and plug it into this function, what comes out is x squared minus 2x minus 1. So I can now take these four pieces of information and put them in to figure out, let's see, what did it ask me to do? Come up with an expression that represents the slope of the secant line. So m, maybe I'll write a secant here just to keep things straight, is y2, x squared minus 2x minus 1, minus y1, negative 1, divided by x2, which is x, minus x1, which is 2. Which if I felt like it, I could simplify this thing. x squared minus 2x minus 1 minus negative 1. Well, if you're subtracting negative 1, you're really just adding 1. So I got minus 1 plus 1. I get x squared minus 2x divided by x minus 2. That's the slope of the secant line. 5 says to calculate the slope of a tangent line, which is a 2.6 topic, incidentally. Uh, we take the limit as x approaches 2 of this thing right here. So I'll switch colors again. For part 5, I'll figure out the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus 2x divided by x minus 2. Why am I taking the limit as x approaches 2? Well, you can kind of think about it as I have my graph and one point is anchored at 2. And the other point on the graph, I'm just calling it x, so it can kind of go wherever the hell it wants to go. So you can picture it close to 2 if you want. You can picture it right here. But it really doesn't matter where it is. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take the limit as that point gets really, really, really close to 2. And then we'll use the slope of the secant line because the secant line turns into, approaches the tangent line. 
as the two points get really, really close together. So I want to figure out this limit here. I can't just change all the x's into twos because I'd get zero divided by zero. But what I could do is factor the numerator. So I got the limit as x approaches two of x times x minus two divided by x minus two. And if I factor the numerator, I can cancel out these x minus twos. Note, I could not have canceled out an x minus two here even if I had factored. And that's because x times x minus two divided by x minus two is not just equal to x, that's not true. But if I write the limit as x approaches two, that becomes a true statement. So I get the limit as x approaches two because these limits are there. If they weren't there, I couldn't do this, but because they're there, I'm gonna cancel out these x minus twos and I'm left with just an x. The limit as x approaches two of x, well, that's easy enough. Let this x get really, really close to two. When x gets close to two, what does x get close to? Wait, what? When x gets close to two, what does x get close to? Well, you just said two. That's what this limit is, two. That's the answer. Note that this simplifying down to just the limit as x approaches two of x, um, because there's just an x here, that's why these slopes were the same as these x twos. That won't always happen. That was just because of the function that we chose. But at any rate, for part five, what you're supposed to do is calculate the slope of the tangent line. And we just did that here as two. Um, I think that's everything for five. For six, it says determine the equation of the tangent line algebraically. So this line that I drew in red here, determine its equation algebraically. Okay, I can do that. Switch to blue. For six, I already know that m is equal to two. So I need one point and a slope. The slope is two. The one point is this point right here. This is the only point that I know of that's on this red line. This point has an x coordinate of two and a y coordinate of negative one. So I got x one equals two y1 equals negative 1. I could take y minus y1 and set that equal to m times x minus x1. This is point slope form of a line. So y minus negative 1 is equal to m times x minus 2. I'll take this 2 and distribute it through. You get y plus 1 is equal to 2x minus 4 and therefore y is equal to 2x minus 5. I think I'm asked, so this is my answer for the equation of this line in red right here. I think I'm supposed to do a reasonableness check on this. Well, the slope is two. This negative five represents the y-intercept. Would you believe that this red line crosses the y-axis at negative five? Sure, negative one, negative two, three, four, five. Yeah, I can see the line going through right there. There's my reasonable check. There's the answer. Uh, so I think I'm gonna end this thing here.